the talent acquisition team, and he's been with the company since 1994. Joel, thanks for your time this evening. Thanks, Tim. Well, thanks for uh, attending this. This is a, a privilege for us to talk about our military program strategy. When I first was contacted by Orion, my first question was, why us? Um, because I've benchmarked and I've seen what other companies are doing, and I don't consider what we're doing um, where we want to be yet. So I think um, as we go through this, you'll kind of see our story. And it's going to be kind of a three-part segment. Um, it's going to be where we were, which was nowhere, with a military talent program, um, kind of what we're doing now, and not only where we want to be. Um, it was funny when Megan sent me some material to look at, and I benchmarked with um, Philip 66. I wanted to reply and say, no way. There's no way I'm doing this. But um, it is a great opportunity, and, and not everybody's in the, same, uh, in the same path. And I'm sure all of you are different um, portions of their, of their military program and different segments. So we just want to share ours. So uh, we'll go through this for a little bit. So just to talk a little bit about the agenda, um, our overview, um, building our partnership with Orion from what we've learned. Um, the evolvement process, um, because it is ever evolving. It's not, like I said, where we want to be, but it is where we're going. Um, and successes and failures. We've had a lot of successes, but we've also had a lot of failures, and I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, and quite honestly, a lot of those are internal to Honda uh, and some of the roadblocks that we've had. And I also want to talk about the path forward. I mentioned we're not where we want to be. Um, but I think with the support of Orion and our internal um, associates at Honda, we're, we're seeing where we want to be now. This is just kind of a timeline to show um, where we started. Um, we worked with Orion as a company back in the late 90s. It was kind of a one-off purchasing logistics type event in Columbus. We had success, hired a lot, um, but then it went away. It's not something that we sustained. Um, we still, I still work daily with people who were brought in from Orion back in the 90s. And then in 2012, um, they placed some equipment service technicians at our Alabama facility. Um, and then that's kind of how discussions started with us in Ohio. I'm not going to talk a lot about Honda. Um, I think most people understand generally what Honda does. Most of you probably think automobiles and probably think about maybe motorcycles or ATVs. But these are just our plants and manufacturing um, facilities in the U.S. And uh, my team and myself are from the Ohio region. We have a lot of manufacturing in Ohio and the Midwest. And these are just some of the products. As I mentioned, uh, most people think automobiles and motorcycles, but we're in the jet business now, which is pretty exciting for us. Um, and of course, power equipment. So as I mentioned, in 2012, we really started talks with Orion. Um, we didn't have a military strategy. Um, we really weren't looking to have one. We didn't know anything about it. Um, but a member from Orion talked with our team. We had some initial discussions. And that was at our Marysville Auto Plant. That's our largest facility in the, in the US. And it was originally um, focused around equipment service. Alabama had some success. We thought we have a lot of openings. Our company's in, trans in transition. Um, we're at the age of a company where we have a lot of retirements coming up, a lot of succession planning, and we thought this might be a, a good avenue. So we had an initial meeting um, at the Marysville Auto Plant. We introduced a team of probably 10 um, equipment service managers, uh, along with some members of, of our talent management team, just to learn about Orion. They took a tour of that plant to understand what we do. Um, and then we had a, you know, an hour, hour and a half meeting. But it was mainly focused on equipment service technicians, and we learned about Orion. So that was probably late summer 2012. We really didn't do much. Um, we were talking about it. We're a conservative company. Sometimes we move slower than maybe we would even like. Um, but we feel sometimes that's a strength as well, because um, we like to think things too. But sometimes, and you'll, you'll see where we've had some failures, we've moved a little slow at times. So we talked about it, and we decided this is something we want to try. So um, we started with a spring event in 2013 in the Marysville region, and we did it on site. And you'll see there's some logistic problems that we experienced on, for having an on-site. So I don't know 
you know, what, co what you've done as companies on site, going to different regional conferences, but I'll share our experience with you with that. Originally, we had um, 11 equipment service technician candidates come in. And out of that event, we hired two. I'm going to introduce you to one here in a second. Um, we had multiple departments. It was about a day and a half. So we basically booked a bunch of rooms. We had a holding, I call it a holding tank. That's a horrible term to use, but that's what we had. Um, and we had candidates coming in and out. We had all these rooms reserved, and we had a lot of hiring managers that um, participated in this. It was a challenge because internally to Honda, and you may experience the same thing, on the support side, it is hard to schedule rooms. I mean, I'm having meetings in the cafeteria sometimes because I can't get a room. And to block off for that long a, a time and for a day and a half was a challenge, number one. Um, getting the candidates to the plant was not a big deal, but we didn't feel like it was the right thing to do in hindsight. You know, if someone's checking out that day at a hotel to interview with us, but their interview's not till three or four o'clock, they have to do something. And they're sitting in a room or having lunch somewhere, but they're killing their time, and it wasn't as efficient as we wanted it to be. Hiring manager availability inside the plant. Um, it's a manufacturing facility, and that's number one for us. Whatever we're doing doesn't matter, ultimately, until they're making the product that, that Honda produces. So initially, Orion did a great job of screening candidates for us. Um, and quite honestly, at the time, I couldn't tell you if it was good screening or not. And I'll talk about understanding military talent here in a second. Um, we had probably five departments within our facility that wanted to participate in these interviews. So on the front end, what we did is we shared resumes and we shared a screening that Orion had with these candidates to give them as much information as we could. And we just basically created a spreadsheet and department A, B, C, D, if you want to interview this person, here's where it is, here's what time it is. And that sounded great until someone like Jerry Blevins had a great resume, had great background, somebody that was going to transition really well to Honda. And all five departments want to interview him in a room that's probably as big as these two tables right here. So I'll never forget, Jerry comes in, talks to Bob Overvik and I. We take him down to the room. And it looked like a small army in there. Not, I mean, people are squeezed into a table, chairs. Not the best reception for a candidate that's already probably nervous to interview. I give Jerry credit. He'd been in, in the industry for a little while outside the military, so he understood. But still not the best look we wanted from Honda's side. Um, and then it was difficult for, we, we soon realized it was difficult for hiring managers to understand military talent. It was hard enough for us as uh, talent acquisition, and it was new to us. But we kind of did this event, and we were going to try it, and we did the best we could, and we hired two people. To, that, to us, that's a success. Um, anytime we hire one, that's a success, whether it's a military candidate or not. Um, it's just the amount of time sometimes you put into getting that candidate. And I'm going to pause here just for a second. I want to introduce Jerry Blevins. Jerry, if you want to come up. I just want Jerry to talk a little bit about his experience. Um, I'll just give him about five minutes to talk about whatever he wants. But he's a little unique because he's had a couple different experiences uh, transitioning. So I'll, I'll give Jerry the floor. Hi, I'm Jerry Blevins. Uh, just a little bit about my background. Uh, I was in the Navy for 10 years as a fire control technician. Uh, got a lot of training in electronics and electrical and mechanical equipment. So when it came time for me to transition out, I went through Orion. And the uh, first time, I, I went to a small company, startup company, uh, first job right out of the Navy. And uh, it, it was a little challenging for me because I was so used to everything, having a process and a procedure and everything being laid out. And when you go to a small company like I did the first time, you got to create a lot of that. And, it's a lot, of extra, a lot of extra work. So I did that for about 10 years and then decided it was time to come back closer to home and I wanted to go with a, you know, a reputable company, you know, a large company. And I found that with Honda. And uh, what I really appreciated about Honda too is they have a lot of programs in place uh, designed to, to make the workers more comfortable and to keep your morale up. Um, when I did the interview when he was talking about it, it was kind of funny, it was two long tables. It was about 10 of them on one side and me on the other side. So, 
It was a little bit intimidating, but I, I think I did all right. Um, and, but now, you know, every day I, I'm working with robots and, and all the cutting line, and, you know, new technology and automation. And uh, I learn something new every day, and I work with a group of excellent technicians. You know, they're always willing to share their knowledge with me, you know, to make us all better. And uh, I, I really like what I'm doing now, and it, it was a very good move to me. Thanks, Jerry. I'm not going to embarrass Jerry, but uh, we would clone Jerry on the equipment service technician if we could. He was really that good coming out, and we shared a story at dinner last night um, because in the holding tank, Bob Overbeek and I were in there, and one guy would go out to interview, and Jerry came back from his, and he sat down, and I was like, how'd you do? He goes, I have the job. I said, well, I hope so. Hope you do. So. The struggles that we faced in that conference were clear. We weren't ready to really have a conference of our own, for sure. Um, we definitely needed to be more organized inside of Honda. We definitely needed to make the candidates feel better uh, and have a little bit more efficiency instead of having the, the 10 hiring managers on one side and the candidate on the other. So we talked to Orion about doing some training. And what we did, again, at the Marysville Auto Plant is uh, went in an auditorium like this, Orion came and they did one of their training sessions. If you've had that, it's a, it's a great training session. Um, and it's evolving too within their own company. It was about a two hour session. We did them in two parts that day. We had one in Marysville for um, the East Liberty Auto Plant and the Marysville Auto Plant. They're within 10 miles of each other. But also, if you remember, I said we started with equipment service technicians. That was our immediate discussion. This training encompassed managers from equipment service, from engineering, from logistics. Um, so we had a, a more broad audience for this training. <coughs> Later in the day, we went to the Ann engine plants about 45 minutes away, same makeup, less people. And then in July, we did one at the Honda Transmission. So we started to kind of get the word out about what we wanted to do as a company. Uh, but we for sure wanted to have hiring managers understand, as well as our own team, what military talent looks like, because it's very difficult initially to figure out what it is. Uh, and I'll share an embarrassing story for myself. Uh, when we first went to a conference, no training, no anything, looking at resumes, and sometimes they're very vague, and Jerry said it himself, uh, he's a fire controlman. Instead of asking, I finally did ask what a fire controlman is. I'm thinking firefighter. And I'm thinking, what's a fire? I don't need a firefighter. Um, but it was much more than that, uh, obviously, to that skill set. So just that was that's a funny one. But there are many other MOS in the military that you try to figure out how does that translate to what Honda does, to what your companies do, and that's a very difficult process. And quite honestly, we're you know we're a year formally into it with Orion. We're a couple two and a half years in it informally. We're still trying to figure out some of that. Um, because you know there's a couple disciplines that you know and you may see all the time but they're still the ones that come in and, and you're really not sure how that fits in your organization but you want to understand it because you don't want to shortchange that person sitting across the table from you because you want to you might be missing a gem just because you don't know uh, what that means so um, about a year ago April of 2014 as we discussed within the Honda family uh, we decided that this is something that we don't want to do on a more formal basis. And the reason that we decided to do that is we saw some value in the candidates that we were getting just in the manner in which we were going. We had an on-site that internally we thought wasn't very good, but we hired two people. Um, we would go to a couple regional events, um, some like they're having uh, today, and we, we had a couple hires. Um, which was great. We, we're still thinking if we hire one person, that's a success for Honda. But we want to continue understanding what military talent was. Um, but the formal partnership, I think, that has really paid off for us is the branding and marketing that is provided. Um, as I mentioned, we had no strategy when we started. We didn't know we were going to do this. Um, but as we started to partner informally, it turned into this uh, partnership that we have today. So. Um, we have a microsite that is out on Orion's uh, website, and I know there's probably people sitting in here that also do too. And you'll see a slide where we had kind of a placeholder microsite um, for a few months that was just something very simple. 
and just the number of people generated to your organization was amazing. Um, and then trying to develop an onboarding strategy, and I think that's one of our failures that we'll uh, discuss a little bit more, but I think Honda does a really good job of being, so when we go to an event, being very um, down to earth, probably not the best, best way to say it, but we get feedback that candidates feel comfortable with us and we're um, approachable. I've had candidates feedback that, you know, I was in there with company Z and um, I needed a PhD to understand what this person presenting to me even was. And uh, so that's valuable feedback to us. But I think what we learned uh, for onboarding is at these events all the way up to where we hire someone, we do a really good job of being with that candidate um, when they come on site, when we're at an event. Once they're hired, we don't do such a good job unless we run into them or make a point to go as they go into our training program, go over to that facility and, and make sure we see them. So we feel like, and we're not there yet, as we start to develop Veterans Resource Group internal to Honda, that's going to solve some of these onboarding issues that we have. Um, and, and we need to get moving on it and not be slow like, like I mentioned we are sometimes. This is just a snapshot of the, of the site um, that I mentioned was a placeholder. So you can see from December to 2000, 2014 to February 2015, the number of people that were funneled to our site. And I thought that was a pretty amazing for just a, a placeholder site. So we're really uh, looking forward to what this coming year provides the traffic uh, to Honda. When we talk about hiring conferences, probably like a lot of you that are sitting out here today, we've done them all. I, I mentioned the, um, the on-site that we did. Uh, we have done more of those, not very many, more on the um, purchasing and logistics side, and it's, it's um, a different location and, and they can support it and the number of candidates they had. We don't do a lot of it, but if we need to, we will. Um, we do exclusive Honda events, which I'm learning very quickly, that's what our hiring managers want. Um, we have, and we've gone to the regional uh, conferences as well. We we're going to continue to do all those. We want to be present in all of them, but we want to be strategic about it. And that's the other thing <coughs> partnering formal, formally does, is we, we have a path now that we're trying to go down that's a little more strategic than what we were doing before. Um, some of the successes and failures I was talking about, obviously we talked about the MOS, that's difficult, that's an ongoing process. Um, Honda has some locations in the Midwest, specifically in Ohio, that are challenging from a location standpoint. I don't know if any of you experience the same thing, I've talked to some other employers that, that have the same issue. Um, for me, uh, we have an Anna engine plant and a Honda transmission plant that are in rural locations, there's really not a lot around. There's some small cities, but you're an hour from what we consider a big city. Um, we did an event one time where we had candidates um, that were interviewed by both the Marysville Auto Plant, which is about 25 minutes uh, from Columbus, Ohio, and members from the Ann Engine Plant, which is out in the middle of nowhere. Where do you think the candidates wanted to go? So we never did that again, and that was a learning, learning lesson for us as well. Um, and sometimes we fight ourselves internally. We have great support from our local team, meaning our unit manager, our team manager support this wholeheartedly. Um, but sometimes you feel like you're pushing this initiative up instead of, of having it rain down on your department. Uh, it would make it a little bit easier, but that's okay. Um, I'll share a story about the Anna Engine Plant because it is difficult to hire people there. It's a great plant with great people, but not everybody wants that location. And when we were first trying to have our, uh, our initial event there, there was roadblocks. Uh, sometimes roadblocks are systems that you have in place in your company, but sometimes roadblocks are people. And some relationships you build up over the years come back to, to pay off once in a while. Um, a member from Orion called me and said, hey, just one off, I'm on my way back from Toledo. You think we could try Anna again and see if we can talk to anybody? I just had learned recently that a guy I worked with 15 years ago took over their maintenance program. So I called him up, asked him if we could meet with him for 20 minutes. Now they've had two hiring conferences and they're going on their ninth hire in about the last two months. So that was very rewarding to us. 
we removed one of the, the roadblocks, um, and now it's really taking off. And then I mentioned connecting with candidates. Uh, that kind of leads into the whole onboarding thing again. We, we want to make sure that we stay connected with candidates after they're hired uh, at Honda. And I mentioned slow dis decision making. When we would go to an event, we would interview candidates, we'd get done with them, we'd do our wrap up with Orion members, and we'd say, okay, we'll let you know when, who we want to bring back on site. And they're like, you should probably let us know now because company A, B, and C wants this person too. Okay. We're like, okay. Uh, we'd go back, we'd talk to the hiring manager, we'd say, we want to we wanna interview these people. They're like, no, they're gone. Those people are gone. Their skill set translates well. Uh, we need to move faster. The nice thing about working with Orion that I've learned, you can give feedback both ways and nobody's offended by it. Um, if you see a candidate line up, and we have, where we might interview 10 people and didn't want any of them, uh, because maybe the, the the skill set didn't translate to what we were looking at. We give them that feedback, and it's better the next time. That's how that relationship works. So we started to expand the program um, outside of the Marysville Auto Plan, outside of East Liberty. Uh, so really expanded it to the Anna Engine Plant, HTM, Logistics, Honda Engineering. So it's starting to get momentum. We were nowhere. We kind of had baby steps, and now we're kind of in the phase where uh, we have some momentum going with our program. We learned really quickly that although we started with equipment service, some of the MOS coming out probably translate better into other disciplines within Honda and we'll see probably more of that going forward in this program year. I mentioned we had tra several training sessions with other Honda companies uh, and now it's removing some of those roadblocks. Once you have some successes, uh, I think people buy in more. So I, I mentioned pushing from the ground up. Sometimes that t that's tough, um, but it is starting to pay off for us now. So these were the metrics from 2014. Uh, we have a weekly call with Orion. We have quarterly meetings where they come on site, uh, and we review these probably like some of, some of you in here do. Um, we have about 74% offer acceptance rate. And I mentioned before, the first couple of years, and they said this in a meeting, we're concerned about the number of interviews you guys have, wherever it is, versus who you bring back, versus who you hire. And we would feed back, don't worry about that. As I mentioned, if we hire two out of that, we're fine. We're willing to do the work and put that in. Now, as we see some of the metrics, because now we have a formal partnership with them, we pay attention to this. We weren't paying attention to that before. We thought, if we hired them, it's good. 74% acceptance rate. We're about 90 as a company at Honda. So obviously we want to look at that. And we want to figure out why is it 74% and not higher. And we'll do that. Um, and that's part of the partnership that we'll have with Orion. The 62% final interview to offer rate, I think the second, third, and fourth uh, box there, I think are going to improve because I've taken some difficult hiring managers to these conferences before uh, that are, I pull my hair out sometimes because they want that perfect person that we, get, we always can't find. Um, I mentioned the ANA and HTM plants, they're very more open-minded uh, and they are willing to give people a chance that have great characteristics that we all want in our organization, uh, that the military provides. Um, so I think they're benefiting now from being open-minded. So I think that's going to take care of some of those middle boxes there. We're, we're anxious to see that. And then finally, the path forward, um, we're creating a quarterly schedule. The way it's worked before, I would call them up and say, I have these openings. What can you do for me? It's kind of last minute. We're scrambling to get people together. We're just going to create a schedule throughout the year. If we need an event, it's there. It's a placeholder, and we'll go to it. We're still going to engage other Honda companies. Honda's a template, but we have many companies under Honda. Um, we still have Alabama, Indiana plants that we've been at. Uh, we're trying to expand to those as well. And again, success will help that. The big one for me and my team is the Veterans Resource Group uh, because we really need to do a better job of onboarding after they get hired. And, and I think that's very important. And I think we've been too slow on it, to, to be honest. And that is our focus now. We're going to do some surveys with candidates that we hired. We're going to do some surveys with hiring managers. 
uh, and we're going to get this rolling and we're going to uh, set up a mentor program and, and try to engage someone who's willing to be the leader in this. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. I know um, we're having uh, the mixer after this. If you have any questions that you'd like to discuss with me, uh, I'm interested in what everybody else is doing too. We're all in the same boat. We're all trying to uh, get the best program going. If you don't have a program and you're thinking about it, uh, this is kind of a, an opportunity to kind of see where we were because like I said, we don't pretend that we have the best program. Uh, we're kind of in that middle road now and trying to expand it. So appreciate you um, attending. If you have any questions offhand, I'll be glad to answer. But if not, I'll see you out there. Thanks. Quick presentation for you, Joel. Here. Joel, we want to thank you for uh, and Honda for presenting. Um, they've been a great partner, and you know I would say when you think about what Honda's done, they've really been great at thinking about how they can make the program better and working with us to do that. Um, we wanted to present an award to them. It's actually a donation. So a few years ago, we used to always give out gifts mm -hmm. to the, the presenters. And last year, we really got on a push with a group called Mil Operation Military Embrace. And they have three keys, charities they support. One that supports uh, wounded veterans that are burned or badly wounded. One is to support their children. And then a third is one to help with PTSD and, and hikes and such to do that. And so we made a few hundred dollar contribution in Honda's name. And then we also want to present this plaque. And thank you, Joel, for coming out tonight. We Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you.